most unusual initiation process, most unusual situation. The Ritvik representative system is a most unusual process of initiation. Even while Srila Prabhupada was physically present, this definitely was not traditional. But it was bona fide due to the unusual circumstances. When Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati left this world, he also saw no one was qualified yet. Therefore, he selected no one to be guru right away. It took over 30 years before Srila Prabhupada began to manifest his qualifications and became the founder Acharya Viscon. When our Srila Prabhupada was leaving this material world, he also saw that none of his disciples were actually qualified either. But the circumstances were not the same. When his divine grace left, the circumstances were actually most unusual. Srila Prabhupada had done something no other past Acharya had done. At the time when Vedic culture had become reduced to only remnants in the land of Bharat Varsa, when the cult of Ch Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was holding on by just a thread in Bengal, when outside of India the world was in total ignorance of Krishna, they never heard of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad philosophy, and outside of a small handful of Vaishnavas in India, the world had never heard of Nitya and Gauranga. At this time, Srila Prabhupada single-handedly brought all of this and more to the whole world. He is responsible for spreading the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to virtually every town and village around the world. He made Krishna a household word in America. He planted the seeds for Varnashram Dharma, Vedic culture, Bhagavat philosophy, etc. all over the whole planet. He revived the worldwide nature of the Vedic culture. As he was leaving this world, tens of thousands of people were coming to his mission. And he could see it was going to grow into the hundreds of thousands and millions and hundreds of millions. He also saw that none of his disciples were yet fully liberated souls. None of his disciples were qualified to give the required shelter of the bona fide initiation to all of the people who would be coming. What to do? This was a most unusual situation that no past Acharya in our line had faced before. Days before Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati left this world, he also saw that no one was yet qualified, therefore he chose no one. It took 30 years before Srila Prabhupada manifest his qualifications. What if? When our Srila Prabhupada was leaving, what if it took not just 30 years or 60 years, what if it took hundreds of years or even thousands of years before another peer devotee fully qualified, who is fully qualified, could become Acharya? What would happen to the mission that he had just established? He had just planted seeds for re-establishing Vedic and Bhagavat culture all over the world. He had just taken the teachings of Sri Chaitanya from near obscurity and spread it all around the whole world. The numbers of people coming were increasing. What would happen to the whole world within, and to those millions of souls who would be coming in the years ahead seeking the shelter of a pure devotee? Who would give all of them that shoulder that only a pure and authorized representative of Lord Sri Krishna can give. This was a most unusual circumstance. No past Acharya had faced this before. When Madhva Acharya came, the disciplic succession coming down from Lord Brahma had become lost. It was an unusual circumstance. And so he took the unusual an unconventional act of approaching Srila Bhyas Dev directly, even though no one else could see the Vapu form of Bhyas Dev, he was no longer residing in that Vapu form because no one else could see him in, in a Vapu form. But because Madhvacharya was transcendentally realized, he could see him, he talked with him, he had uh, conversations with him. And he took, actually he went and visited him one time, he came back and then he visited him a second time and asked to take initiation from him. So Madhvacharya took initiation directly from Vyasadeva, even though no one could see him in his vapu form. 
he was this way and this way he was able to re-establish the chain of the cyclic succession. Just as previous acharya would a previous acharya would do something unusual in the face of an unusual circumstance, such as Madhvacharya did, Srila Prabhupada chose to set up an unusual process for initiation in which he could continue to go on giving his shelter, the shelter of a genuine pure devotee of Krishna, in the form of diksha to all the souls of this world who so desired. He established a system of initiation by which he could continue to accept disciples via this Ritvik representative uh, Acharya, uh, of the Acharya system even after he is no longer present in his temporary vapu form. This is the wonderful and unique function of the July 9th directive. Jayom Vishnupad Param Sarparavaka Chacharja Asta Tarasata Shishima, this is the divine grace AC. Bhaktivedanta Swami Pupada Ki Jai. The founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All glories to your wondrous, magnanimous, compassionate and mercy, Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, this will be the end of this segment on the July 9th letter.